today's cooking extravaganza involves fresh strawberries and rhubarb from my family's garden. I am baking a strawberry rhubarb pie with a double crumb topping. And if this double crumb topping is too excessive for you, you can cut the measurements in half. And the recipe is below in the description. It is out of Miss American Pie, a cookbook by Beth M. Howard. Step number one is creating the pie crust. Prior to this, I cut up my butter and I portioned out my shortening and I stuck them into the fridge until I need them, which is right now. And this recipe that I'm making is for a double pie crust. Since I'm making a crumb topping, I'm gonna put half of this crust into the freezer so that I can skip this step next time that I get a little pie craving. So what you're seeing me do now is in this large bowl, I am working together the butter shortening and the flour with my hands until I have almond and pea sized lumps. Now I'm going to drizzle a little bit of ice water at a time and toss this mixture around until it becomes moistened. And you don't want to add too much water, just enough so that it holds the dough together on its own. And you also don't want to mess with the dough too much. This process should be pretty quick and see how it's starting to come together. And I'm just adding a little bit more water just until it really starts to come together. And now that the crust is starting to form a ball, I'm dividing this into two balls and then I'm forming them into disc shapes. And then I'm wrapping these both up in plastic bags and I'm putting one in the fridge until I'm ready to make the pie. And then I'm freezing the other one for the next time that I decide to do a pie recipe. When cutting the strawberries, I prefer a smaller diced cut, but you can cut them however you prefer. And in the Miss American Pie cookbook, Beth suggests that you cut them into halves or quarters. So it's your preference. And like I said before, this is my first time actually baking a pie. The recipe calls for three cups of strawberries and three cups of rhubarb, but going forward, I'm gonna bump that up to four cups of each for a little more filling since I doubled the crumb topping. And the rhubarb in my parents' backyard is ripe, so I'm doing a little forage session for about four really pretty deep pink stalks. And now that the rhubarb is trimmed and rinsed, I'm cutting these into one inch slices. And pink is my favorite color, so I'm obsessed with how gorgeous this baking process is. Now I'm moving on to the crumb topping and I use salted butter throughout this recipe and then I don't add any additional salt, but feel free to use unsalted and then add salt. Also reminder that I doubled the crumb topping because I am an excessive gal and I prefer a more intense crust topping to filling ratio. But you can cut the topping in half to the normal amount or if you're looking for a good time, you can double it like I did.
And I'm using a food processor for the crumb topping because it's super easy and it also helps not melt the butter with your hands. So it's a win-win. I'm mixing the flour and the brown sugar first and then I'm adding in the butter and mixing until it starts to come together. Shout out to Teddy who is micromanaging this pie process. Now it's time to roll out the pie crust. I took it out of the fridge about 15 minutes ago to warm up a little bit and I am flouring the countertop for this rolling sash. And in the cookbook, Beth Howard says to push and pull the rolling pin, but don't roll it like a crazy person. So I'm trying my best to adhere to those instructions. And I did end up rolling this out a little too wide, but since this is my first pie, I'm not going to beat myself up over it. Now I am gently nudging the dough off of the countertop with a dough scraper so that none of the dough is stuck to the countertop. And you wanna be super careful on this step and do it really slowly so that you don't tear the crust. Now I am grabbing the pie dish and I'm gently sliding the crust over the dish and letting gravity do its thing. I'm not gonna mess with it too much. Since I overestimated the width of the pie dish, I'm trimming off some of the excess crust with scissors. I'm now folding the crust on top of the pie dish so that all of the crust is sitting inside of the dish like so. Look at how pretty that is. All right, now it's party time with the filling. In a large bowl, I'm mixing the rhubarb, strawberries, sugar, and tapioca together. I added an extra half a cup of sugar to the filling because I like okay, it extra sweet, but the original recipe calls for one cup of sugar if you're interested in sticking to the measurements. I will also make note of all of my modifications in the description below. We're now going to let this sit for about 20 minutes. And 20 minutes later, look at how juicy and sugary that filling is. It's ready to be poured into the pie crust. Now for my excessive crumb topping moment, I'm crumbling all of that deliciousness on top of the filling and then I'm placing it onto a baking sheet so that it can catch any of the crumbs that might fall while baking. And I'm sticking this into the oven at 425 for 15 to 20 minutes until the top is golden brown and then I lowered the temperature to 375 degrees and cooked for another 40 minutes until the filling was bubbling. And my first pie turned out beautifully, if I don't say so myself. It is golden and bubbling and amazing.
And I actually had the patience to wait about 12 hours before cutting this open so all of the filling could set and look like this. This is what it looks like after about 12 hours. So if you liked this video, please like this video and share with your friends. Comment below with any super kind tips, tricks, or future recipe suggestions. And I'll see you in the next video.